Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I am Apostle Sean Johnson, and I want to welcome you to Get Right With God, TV official. Subscribe and share my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the bell to get notifications so you'll know when I am publishing new content. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you so much, God, for all that you've done, that you're doing, and that you're about to do in our lives, individually and collectively. Father, we thank you, O God, for your grace and mercy. We thank you that we're still here, still standing, still strong, still striving, and we're still surviving. You are an amazing God. You are a good God. And you are a kind God. Father, I pray, God, that you will bless the message and the messenger. And as I deliver this word, oh God, let it resonate in the hearts, minds, souls, and spirits of those who watch and listen. We love you so much. And we give you praise. And we rebuke the enemy. Every device, every force, every evil spirit that would try to come against me and this message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Once again, I am Apostle Sean Johnson. I want to welcome you to Get Right With God, TV official. I have a word I want to share with you all. So grab your Bible, grab your weapon, which is your Bible. And I want you to go with me to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter number 18. We're just going to glance at verse number six. Leviticus 18. Six, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Your translation may be different, but the meaning is always the same. Again, last time for your hearing, Leviticus chapter number 18 and verse number six. Hear now the reading of God's holy word. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord, your God, God's word. For a few moments, I would like to minister from this message, which was, I was going to title the law of morality, but I'm just going to title this incest incest all right y'all praying for me i know some of you are going to say wow apostle you really going to go there huh oh yes we're going to go there should i proceed yes indeed let me check around real quick let me look around let me you know look down the row I don't see any, a lot of preachers preaching and teaching this type of message, this topic. I don't I don't see anybody preaching or teaching, maybe a few, but I don't see too many preaching, preaching this on this topic. So we're going we're going to let the Lord have his way. Maybe because, you know, it's not a subject that appeals or appeases people. Oh, well, I'm not here to appeal and please people. This is the word of God. And I am commissioned to preach and teach all of it in season and out of season. And as I keep it raw, real, radical and relevant, I'm going to boldly preach and teach about incest. What is incest? Incest is sexual relations, sexual intercourse and sexual activity from family with family members such as a parent a child i'm a mother and son father and daughter mother and daughter father and son brother and sister brother and brother sister and sister aunt and nephew uncle and nephew uncle and niece aunt and niece cousin and cousin there are many disturbing things in this world and incest is one of them. In many countries, incest is prohibited by law. It is held to be repulsive, dangerous and illegal. America has an incest problem. In a majority of states in America, incest is illegal. The punishment associated with engaging in an incestuous relationship vary by state. Incest 
can hurt and harm a family member to cause them to use drugs, drink alcohol, cause mental health illness or disorder, prostitution, rape, crime, eating disorders, domestic abuse, sexual violence, suicidal ideations or thoughts, and the list goes on. Shame and guilt from this sin, and it is a sin, is caused by incest. Some people want to keep you know, it all in the family. In the past, incest was not thought of to be wrong. When you were a teenager, you did not think of the psychological and biological thought uh, caused and consequences of incest. You just did it. God has never approved of incest outside the marriage relationship in any age or generation. Incest is not taboo. Today, the spirit of incest is a demonic covenant and curse in families. Let me say it again. The spirit of incest is a demonic covenant and curse in families. What are you talking about, Apostle? I'm talking about there are soul ties created and connected to incest. There are children made from incest. There is residue lingering from incest. There are spirits connected to incest. There is an emotional attachment to incest. There are causes and effects from incest when a family member relies on another family member to fulfill their sexual fantasies, emotional needs, and support. Let's look at the text. Leviticus chapter number 18 is all about the laws of sexual morality, which I was going to title this message. It's all about sexual conduct and commands from God against incest. The Lord spoke to Moses and he said, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. According to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, uh -huh, you shall not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall live by my statues because I am the Lord. After reading and studying the scriptures in Leviticus, I can say that Leviticus chapter number 18 is one of the most direct passages in the Bible. God was not playing games with the people. He wasn't playing games with Israel. He told Moses to tell them. He commanded them. Yeah, don't do what they do. So God made it perfectly clear. He said, I am the Lord your God. Back in the day, the Israelites were under the law. Today, the Israelites, including us as Gentiles, we are not under the law, but we are under what? Grace, according to Romans chapter number six, verses 14 through 15 and Galatians chapter number five, verse 18. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus affirmed the fulfillment of the law, saying in Matthew chapter number five, verses 17 through 19, do not think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The world is worse today than in the past. People will do whatever they want to do, especially in sexual matters. We belong to God and he commanded us not to do as the world does. God gave us commandments, standards and principles to live by. He commanded Moses to tell Israel to know what is right and what is wrong. Then and now incest is wrong. The Israelites were commanded not to act as the other nations. God has commanded and warned all of us to surround ourselves with the world and its culture of sexual perversion. Romans chapter number 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God intentionally created sex for marriage 
not sex for incest. Let me say it again. God intentionally created sex for marriage, not sex for incest. God desires for a husband and wife to have sex and be fulfilled, not only in pleasure, but fulfilled to, pur to their purpose of it. That's why God created it. Sex is what bonds to bond bonds together uh -huh, one man and one woman in the covenant of marriage. Let me say it again. Sex is what bonds together or binds together one man and one woman in the covenant of, let me add this, a kingdom marriage. Genesis chapter number two, verse 24, New King James Version says, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother. He said, leave his father and mother, not stay with your father and mother, not go back to your father and mother. He said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Not two flesh, one flesh. Jesus echoed God's words in Matthew chapter number 19, verses number four through six. God did not say anything about joining cousin with cousin and becoming one flesh to have sex. He said one man, one woman. God did not say anything about joining mother and son, father and daughter, and becoming one flesh to sex. Some of you were young when you were introduced to sex and incest. And you did not understand at the time. You thought it was, you know, it was all fun. You thought it was games. You know, you thought it was all good, you know, to get your freak on with family members. It's tight, but it's right. With authority and power, I cast out every demonic force. I cast out every demonic spirit. I cast out every demonic covenant and curse associated with the spirit of incest. Why is sexual relations among immediate family called incest prohibited? Number one, it is wickedness. Verse, you shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, nor shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are near of kin to her. It is wickedness. This is God's word. This ain't Apostle Sean. This is God's word. And we're talking about, we're teaching on God's word today. God condemns sexual relations between family members in Israel. God still condemns incest in the world today. By blood or by marriage, grandparents and Grandchildren, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews, parents, and, and the spouses of their children, siblings, and the spouses of their other siblings, the children of a spouse, the sibling of a spouse, mothers humping their sons, sons humping their mothers, fathers humping their daughters, daughters humping their fathers, cousins humping their cousins. Sidebar, stop letting your sons and daughters sit on Uncle Joe's lap. Mothers need to stop pampering their sons with money, vacations, and the vagina to fulfill their emotional needs, especially their, these pastors. Fathers need to stop spoiling their daughters with money, paradise trips, and the penis, especially these, these pastors. Stop it. Stop it. It's wickedness. Israel had a serious problem with their nakedness allowing relatives to have sex with other relatives. I have never, ever uncovered my nakedness to my sons and my daughter and my grandson. I have never, ever uncovered my nakedness. They never see me in a nude to my sons, my daughter, and my grandson. I don't play that. Homie don't play that. A husband should only see his wife's nakedness. A wife should only see her husband's nakedness. No one else. The Apostle Paul made it perfectly clear 
in 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse 4, he said, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over her own body, but the wife does. God said in his word, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. It is wickedness. It's evil, unacceptable, detestable, just plain old wrong. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance so that you do not commit any of these abominable, abominable customs which were committed before you and that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord, your God. Wow. Why is sexual relations among immediate family called incest prohibited? Number two, it is an abomination. Verse, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Again, this is God's word. Let me share this real quick. I was working on something, project and something, and Holy Spirit just dropped on in my spirit this message and I stopped what I was doing and I wrote this message in about 20 minutes because it was in my spirit and I had to go and he said I need you the, the Lord said I need you to teach this because it needs to be exposed it's an abomination this is God's word I need to go back to verse number 19 we had 22 verse 22 but I need to go back to verse number 19 um there were under laws regarding sexual morality God gave a command asking against sex during menstruation. Let me say it again. God gave a command against sex during menstruation. He said, also, you shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is in her customary impurity. Customary impurity. I call it her Levitical season. Most men and women like having sex during a menstrual cycle. That's just nasty. Let me talk about, let me talk to the husbands right quick. You need to have some restraint and allow your wife to be cleaned and washed during her Levitical season. Stop being nasty and wait on your wife. Let me talk to the wives. I don't care how horny you are in your heaviness. Hubby is going to have to wait. That's just nasty. When the wait is over, 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse 3 says, let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her and likewise also the wife to her husband. My God, during a Levitical season, learn to practice patience and have some restraint. God gave another command against adultery he said do not lie carnal with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her is it adultery if the husband com commits incest with a, a woman or a daughter in the family yes is it is let me say like it's another female it's another another woman if is it adultery if a wife commits incest with a man or son in the family Yes, and it's adultery. It is an it, it's a man and it's, it's a male that you're having sex with. Lying carnal is another way of saying sexual intercourse or activity with someone outside of your marriage, with a family member. Incest. God's intention for sexual expression is within a marriage covenant between one man and one woman. I can't say that enough because you just have to get the draws from, from, from a family member in, in the name of incest. You broke covenant with your own wife, your partner. You violated the vows. You tainted the trust of your marriage, of your spouse. Incest outside of marriage covenant is breaking the marriage covenant. I am, I'm just encouraging you. I'm not condemning you. I'm, hey, let the chips fall where they may. If, if, just say, ouch. I'm encouraging you. Do not go there. Do not commit adultery. Do not allow this wickedness to overtake you. If you did, you need to repent. You need to repent. If you don't repent, 
and you say, you know what, I'm good, then that's, it's going to eat you up, eat you up, and you're going to keep doing wrong. You're going to keep commi committing incest, adultery, all that stuff. Don't go there. If you're thinking about it, don't go there. If you think about, well, I'm, uh, you know, my son is old enough now, and I'm, uh, you know, and I'm horny. Let me go ahead and, uh, you know, give him some. That's the truth. And it's nasty. Don't even go there. Do not fulfill the lust of your nasty flesh. Because you are unfaithful and uncontrolled with your nasty flesh while committing incest, it does not mean that your faithful and controlled spouse has to deal with your self-inflicted nonsense. But guess what? If he's a man of God, if she's a woman of God, they can, they can forgive you. It will take God to forgive you. But you got to repent. If you commit incest, husband or wife, with another family member, please be truthful and share with your spouse. Be truthful and share with your spouse, spouse if you committed adultery. And give them the space to forgive you. Seek forgiveness. Do not hide it. Do not keep it a secret. Be honest. Be honest with your husband. Be honest with your, your wife. Let them know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm so sorry. Godly sorry. I cheated. I committed adultery. I, I slept with somebody else. I slept with Joe down the street. I slept with Susie down the street. Be honest. Be honest. Don't hold it in. Don't keep it a secret. That stuff going to eat you up and, and then you might end up in divorce court. But we don't want that. Divorce is not an option. Listen, divorce is not an option. Many marriages have been healed from not just adultery, but for, from, from the sin of, in the spirit of incest. This goes for male as, as well as female, women, and men, everybody. God was also talking about same sexual acts. He condemned it. He, he condemned the sin of homosexuality. He condemned the sin of lesbianism. He called it all an abomination. Same-sex incest, same-sex acts is an abomination. The Bible prohibits it in Leviticus chapter number 18. Read all of it. Because God wasn't playing with Israel. He said, I'm commanding you, don't do this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 9, and if you go all the way down to 12, it, it, it clarifies and confirms what God was saying. Revelation 22, 15, Romans chapter number one, verse 24 through 32 confirms it. Israel backslid because of its same sex incest, idolatrous intentions, pornographic perversions, and awful abominations. God said in his word, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance so that you do not commit any of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. I got one more. Why is sexual relations among immediate family called incest prohibited? Prohibited. It is wickedness. It is an abomination. And it is perversion. Let's look at the text. Verse 23, nor shall you mate with any animal. Here we go. To defile yourselves with it. Nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. God commands against bestiality. Zophilia, which is bestiality is another word for bestiality, zoophilia, and condemns sexual relations with animals. That's just nasty. It was never ever God's intention for people to have sex with horses, sheep, and, 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 and dogs. It goes against God's laws and his design. Many marriages add animals to sexual experiences. Many marriages add an, a, a, a family member or another male, another female, and an animal in the mix to have a sexual experience. That's just nasty. That takes incest to a whole new level.
Y'all praying for me? It is all perversion. When you pervert yourself, you are defiling yourself. You are unclean and impure. You are unholy and ungodly. This kind of sexual behavior is wrong on so many levels. Perversion also means to mix, to mix. So in, a, in, a, in the sexual act of practicing incest and mixing species goes beyond the boundaries of what God established. In many countries, sex with animals is legal. Porn sites practice bestiality, zoophilia, and promote it. Sex with animals was prevalent among the Canaanites as well as Baal worship. That's why God said when you leave Egypt and go to Canaan, don't do what don't do what they did in Egypt and don't even do what they do in Canaan. Because they practice Baal worship. And Baal worship includes bestiality, adultery, sexual acts, incest, the whole nine, satanic rituals, satanic curses, satanic covenants that many people need to be delivered from today. People support and encourage this foolishness and nastiness. Satan has caused millions of people to reject God's commands, to allow incest, polygamy, prostitution, and the like to confuse and keep them stuck. Especially if you're dealing with a Jezebel spirit who engages in all kinds of sexual acts including animals, animal worship, satanic worship. Every good thing that God created, Satan perverts it. God created sex for marriage and called it good. Satan perverted it with homosexuality, adultery, fornication, lesbianism, and incest. Satan cannot create, so he perverts what God created. Let me say it again. Satan cannot create so he perverts what God created. Satan has succeeded in perverting creation with his demonic ideas and idols. Perversion does not equal freedom. Perversion does not equal freedom. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. Perversion is, is bondage. And Satan uses it to draw people away from God's truth and commands. Keep praying, keep committing, keep, 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 keep committing to uh, incest with your family members. Keep committing adultery. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep fornicating. Keep having sex with animals. Keep on. See what happens. You and that animal is going to hell. You and that person is going to hell. You will not inherit the kingdom of God according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse, verses 9 through 10 and Galatians 5, 19 through 20, 21. God said in his word, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance so that you do not commit any of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord, your God. Listen, as I close, I can give you 10 ways to stop incest in your life. I can give you five ways to receive deliverance from incest in your life. I'm, I'm not doing that. We're not going there. With urgency and obedience to God, I want to pray against the spirit of incest. I want to pray right here, right now, against the spirit of incest. Father God, I stand in the gap for marriages and family, my family, and call them to repentance of every past, present, and future act of incest in every generation. With authority and power, I pray that you break every demonic covenant and curse connected to incest. I break the spirit of incest off your households husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, children, grandchildren, grandparents, and kissing cousins in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare freedom from grief, shame, 
loss, rejection, hurt, pain, and residue that incest brought and still bring. I break the spirit of incest from minds, bodies, wills, emotions, marriages, and relationships. I break the spirit of incest and its strongholds of sexual manipulation, control, and abuse of family members. I break the spirit of incest that has caused anxiety, trauma, turmoil, torment, triggers, depression, Suicidal ideations, suicidal thoughts, brokenness and emptiness. I pray for healing to the nations. I pray for healing to America. I speak healing to every household. I speak healing to every marriage. I speak healing to every wounded person who have inherited this generational curse called incest. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family member, over every husband, every wife. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family member, name by name, one by one, branch by branch, person by person, bloodline by bloodline. The curse of incest is destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The sin of incest is is destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The spirit of incest is destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The residue of incest is destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every power, principality, ruler of darkness, spirit of wickedness, spirit of abomination, and spirit of perversion is dismantled and destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. God of the devil is a liar. The devil would not longer, no longer incite incest on the family. The devil will no longer incite incest on the family. The devil will no longer incite incest on the marriage. The devil will no longer incite incest on the marriage. My family and your family shall be free forever from the spirits and sin of incest. My family and your family shall be forever free and delivered from the spirits and sin of incest. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Is free indeed. Husband, you are free. Wife, you are free. Cousin, you are free. Free. Sister, you are free. Brother, you are free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. It is so and so shall it be. Hallelujah. Glory to the mighty name of Jesus. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you want to be part of the church, I invite you to surrender your whole entire life to Jesus Christ, who wants to be your Lord and Savior. John chapter number three, verse 16 says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God does not want you to perish and go to hell. He wants you to live so you can experience his kingdom forever. Romans chapter number 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus and you could be saved today. You could be saved. Acts 16, 31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. All you got to believe, accept, believe, receive Jesus Christ today. And you will be saved, you and your household. Listen, to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me. You ready? Let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I want to be saved. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Save me. Transform me change me, baptize me, deliver me, sanctify me, set me apart, free me, free me from every sin, free me from the spirit of incest, free me and fill me with your Holy Spirit so he can be my comforter and keeper, my advocates, my 
paraclete, my all. Replace my carnal mentality, my ghetto thinking, powered by fear, with your kingdom identity, powered by faith, so I can have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Listen, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to welcome you to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. You now are now a born again believer. You are a kingdom citizen. And you must find yourself a Christ-centered ministry where you can grow, you can sow, you can reap and expand. On your journey with Jesus, you must build your relationship with him. Stay in God's word. You got to pray fast and surround yourself with kingdom-minded believers so they can help you, so they can take you through the process, so you can mature, so you can become an effective disciple and witness for Jesus Christ. We must witness to the world. You must share your testimony how Jesus saves to the world. So you can let sinners, backsliders, family, friends, your neighbors, and your haters, let them all know, let the lost know that they need to get right with God. Because Jesus is coming back. His return is imminent. No man knows the day or the hour, but Jesus Christ is coming back. And the thing is, now that you're born again, you in there. You can inherit the kingdom of God, but don't sin. And don't involve yourself anymore in the sin and spirit of incest. You now have this gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. So welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom family. I have a few announcements I want to share with you. We're going to pray and then we're going to close out. If you want to sow into this ministry, if you want to sow into this ministry, I invite you to sow so I, you know, I can share the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world, in my neighborhood. And I can win souls for God's kingdom. That's is what that's what it's all about. You can give by Zell at Dr. Sean PJSR at gmail.com. That's Dr. Sean PJSR at gmail.com. Or you can give by PayPal at paypal.me forward slash Sean Johnson Men. That's paypal.me forward slash Sean Johnson Men. It's also on my website at www.agefellowship.com. That's www.agefellowship.com. You can go to the give page and you can give a donation of any amount. I so much appreciate it. Thank you so much for your giving. Connect with Apostolic Grace Evangelism Fellowship, where we are winning souls for God's kingdom. We're strategizing. We're connecting as leaders and as, as, as the body of Christ to win souls. That's what it's all about. It's no fluff. There's no strings attached. If you want to be a part of this fellowship as a kingdom believer, as a citizen of the kingdom, you can join us. You can partner with us so we can, you know, continue to share the gospel, teach, serve, do a lot of things that we do in this fellowship. Again, go back to www.agefellowship.org. Watch Get Right With God TV official on YouTube. Watch Get Right With God TV official on YouTube every Sunday at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you subscribe, share and get notifications. This is Get Right With God TV official. On Sundays, YouTube at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes I record, sometimes I go live. But the word, the message of the gospel shall go forth. Let's pray. And then we're going to close out. Amen. Father, we thank you so much, God, for this mighty word. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your commands. Thank you, oh God, that you was very clear in your message. You was very clear. You said incest is wrong. It's wicked. It's an abomination and it's perversion. But you know what, Lord? Just like you told Israel and you're telling us today. That we all can be delivered from that spirit, from that sin, any sin, any spirit. The devil should not overtake us. We are free in Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Gee, we thank you for your Holy Spirit being with us. We even thank you for dispatching your angels and giving charge over your angels to watch over us, to cover us, to minister on our behalf. We thank you so much, God, for just allowing the gospel, the true gospel, to go forth. I love you, Lord. I really do. And I love everybody with the love of Jesus Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. and Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Get Right with God. I am Apostle Sean Johnson. Souls must be saved. Lives must be changed. Do not wait. 
Do it now. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.